In Manhattan, it is fairly normal to hear young musicians practicing their art in parks, subway stations, and even on street corners. It is, however, different to find them supported by a stage, complete audio crew, and promotional banners. Since 2006, that is just the kind of support that is provided to select students and graduates of the Upper West Side's various music conservatories. Providing that support and more is the Verdi Square Festival of the Arts. Laurie Grossman came up with the idea. I came home from a vacation in Europe and I live on the balcony up there in the apartment across the street. And when I looked down in the park, I said, you know, and if this was Europe, there'd be music down there. Next thing I knew, I ran over to my computer, emailed everyone I knew, and the rest is history. Laurie gathered friends and supporters to present the very first Verdi Square Festival of the Arts concert in 2006. The opera is what started the concert in honor of Giuseppe Verdi, whose statue bedecks the uh, park. But we've also had jazz, we've had musical theater, we've had uh, brass bands, we've had a whole variety of, of music. One key to the festival's success has been its support of up-and-coming talent. The 2009 season started on May 10th with Grandpa Musselman and his syncopators. We had a jazz concert with wonderful musicians from the Manus School of Music, and today we're going to have uh, students from the Manhattan School of Music singing opera. One never knows who may show up in the audience. A world-renowned conductor who just happens to be the son of the festival's executive director caught a concert this season. I think the thing that's so fantastic about the Verdi Square Festival is how it encourages young people and gives them a forum in which to perform. And it's a challenging forum. It's got subway rumbles underneath our feet. As a matter of fact, the whole square sort of vibrates. You just have to tune it out and focus on the music part of the job. It's part of the job, absolutely. Because you never know, for example, if you're on the stage, when a set is going to fall uh, behind you, when there's going to be a crash off stage. You always have to be ready for these things. Very so it's, it's, it's all good, part of a great education. Opera singers don't usually deal with microphones, so it's very interesting kind of not really being able to hear yourself, but knowing that the audience can hear you just fine and clear. But uh, you got to kind of train for everything in every situation. This is just another learning experience. I was nervous at first because I haven't sung outside or with a microphone very often because we're taught to sing indoors and without amplification, but it was a lot easier than I expected. They're very professional and very easy. I've sung outdoors, um, but like in a private park kind of situation, never at a subway stop in the middle of buildings and everything, but it was a good experience, you know? If you could sing here, you could sing anywhere. Audience members include first-timers and even some who have been to each of the festival's ten concerts. It's fabulous and it's growing so beautifully. They have um, gotten down the science of getting the audience together and getting fabulous one after another of wonderful programs. It's, it, it, it really makes your heart feel good to see these young performers who are so talented, brimming with talent. Talent is no stranger to this part of the Upper West Side. This little spot that everybody is sitting on right here really was historically a spot that was the heart and soul of music in New York long ago. This square where all of you are sitting has a long history of music. As a matter of fact, the famed maestro Arturo Toscanini strolled here. And actually, his grandson is here with us today. Alfredo, please stand up. This venue is, uh, reminds me of, of a great deal of grandfather who first lived here at the Ansonia Hotel when he was conducting the Metropolitan during the years 1908 to 1915. And then uh, when he was living later, he was living at the Astra Hotel. But my mother and father and I lived here at the Ansonia in 1939, 1940 with such uh, 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 companions as the uh, Lawrence Melchior who used to play bridge, and when they couldn't find a fourth, they would call this 10-year-old kid to sit in on the bridge games, and that was me. 
If you didn't get a chance to catch the first two performances of the season, the Verde Square Festival of the Arts will have one more performance September 13th at 5 o'clock right here at Verde Square Park. On the Upper West Side, I'm Bill Krumlich reporting for CNS Arts. Yeah.